Una... Introduco brevissimamente, allora grazie a questo progetto eh, Interreg Spazio Alpino che si chiama iMokers, di cui vi parleremo fra una mezz'oretta, eh, abbiamo pensato di organizzare una breve sessione internazionale nell'ambito di, di questo convegno, eh, raccogliendo qualche esperienza che conosciamo direttamente e che a noi pare particolarmente interessante, quindi ovviamente non è una rassegna esaustiva di quello che sta succedendo in altri paesi, ma sono tre esperienze tra loro piuttosto diverse che ci interessava proporvi per aiutarci così a, a, ad alimentare la discussione su quello che si potrebbe fare in Italia. E in questa prima parte abbiamo tre, tre ospiti che vi, vi introduco brevemente, e Fernando Magdaleno Mas, che rispetto a quanto c'è in programma in realtà ha appena cambiato lavoro, adesso lavora per il Ministero dell'Ambiente, anzi non si chiama Ministero dell'Ambiente, ma il Ministero dell'Ambiente dell'Ecologia, eh, della Transizione Ecologica. Spagnolo, è un, uh, un geomorfologo e ci parlerà di un progetto interessante in un ambito molto urbanizzato, che è quello di, di Madrid. Benoît Terrier, che lavora nell'Agence de l'Eau Rome Mediterranea Corse, che diciamo, l'Agence de l'Eau è l'equivalente di un'autorità di bacino italiana ed è forse l'Agence de l'Eau che più si è occupata di, di riqualificazione idromorfologica e di temi idromorfologici in Francia negli ultimi, negli ultimi anni. E poi Paolo Fernandez Garrido di Fish Migration Foundation che ci parlerà di un tema che abbiamo già toccato molto brevemente ieri e l'altro ieri, che è quello della rimozione delle, degli sbarramenti del ripristino della continuità longitudinale. Quindi senza perdere altro tempo, chiamo Fernando a raccontarci della sua esperienza con il Manzanares a Madrid. Vi ricordo di... Uh, may I remind you to speak as slowly as possible? Don't tap on the microphone, <laughs> so we save the ears to our interpreters. For is yours. Okay, thank you, Andrea, and uh, good evening uh, to everyone in the in the room. Thank you for inviting me here today and to let me show you this presentation, one of the uh, most relevant travel uh, works we have uh, today in Spain about river restoration. Let's go on. Okay. So, as uh, he was mentioning before, I'm working today in the Ministry of the Ecological Transition in Spain, uh, which was the former environmental ministry. But I come from a research agency, which uh, I've been working there for the last 15 years, so I've been much involved in different hydromorphological and ecological projects in, in the country. This is one of them, uh, which has two different, two different sites, and I will show you uh, very briefly both of them. First, a very short introduction to the, to the place, to the site. This is a, a broad context to the, to the land. This is, you know, uh, Spain and Portugal. We are in a land of contrast with different, uh, uh, very deep gradients in terms of rainfall and runoff. We have a, a quite dryland area, only uh, where there are some places with a, with a higher rainfall in the north of the, of the country and in the mountainous areas. But in general terms, we have a very dry land area with rainfall, which is about 500 millimeters in, in most of the, of the places. At the same time, we have a quite complex country in terms of agglomerations. People is quite condensed in the center of the, of the country and in the coastline, while the rest is uh, almost completely empty in terms of uh, density population. And finally, we have a country with uh, almost 30% of the, of the land, which is protected by different uh, uh, European uh, uh, networks uh, like Natura 2000 and others. So uh, the three uh, the three aspects, the three topics, come together to explain most of the context, physical, environmental, and social context. I'm going to show in this presentation. We are working right in the center of, of the of the country in Madrid uh, city. <laughs> We also have uh, a very different insight in river restoration today in, the, in Spain. After many years of discussions and many conflicts, uh, as you probably will know by, by media, we have now an approach which uh, tries to, to balance 
four different uh, focuses on, on rivers, which is the restoration of flow patterns. We need to restore flows uh, before we do any other thing about the morphology, ecology, or, or people. We need to restore the, the former flow patterns. We also have to, to involve in the restoration of geomorphic, geomorphic processes. We have to, to give the space to rivers to create conditions for for geomorphic processes. We need also to restore habitats and connectivity, which is one of the most forgotten things about rivers, con continuity of, of processes. And finally, and not least, we need to restore the social uh, environment, the social sphere, which was uh, typical of rivers. Uh, people is very much attracted by, by wetlands, by rivers, and we need to bring people back to, the, to those places. And uh, between all those four different sides of the, of the question, we have a new legal context, which is common also to, to Italy. We need to, to show a very clear uh, adaptive management to, to, the, to the management of rivers, and we need to include cost, benefit, and cost effectiveness analysis on all kind of projects we, we do today to try to explain people and politics why we're investing well the euros they give us for restoration. First of this, just for a, for a very, very broad uh, yes idea, we are trying to, to restore flow patterns by uh, redesigning environmental flows in most of the rivers of the, of, of the country. We have now like about 15% uh, of rivers with new environmental flow regimes which are not uh, optimum, they need to be improved uh, much and much, but this uh, constitutes a new insight because uh, already these regimes include minimum flows, maximum flows, control flats, which is something I'm going to, to talk about uh, a bit in the following slide, and maximum rates of change. So we are trying to release uh, more complex and better based environmental flood regimes in most of these rivers. One of the things uh, I think I wanted to show you is the, uh, the new releases, the new design of control flats in different regulated rivers of, of the country. This is why uh, a, a very uh, newly born uh, initiative which tries to make rivers uh, more uh, heterogeneous, more complex, more dynamic by releasing uh, big uh, flats uh, every three, four, five years, according to the, to the basin, but trying to create new habitats and to refresh the condition of these uh, very much regulated rivers, which are being uh, impoverished by so many years of uh, artificiality. So we have now some real experiences in the north of the country and also in other places. And in this case of Madrid uh, River, we are also trying to, to release one of these flats to accompany to make the context more uh, favorable for the rest of the things we are trying to, to reach. Most of these uh, experiences have been uh, summarized in this uh, paper for anyone who wants to, to see the things we are trying to do with these uh, control flats, which are also seen uh, being done in some other countries of the world, like Australia, like the US, like Switzerland. But I think it's a good opportunity to, to discuss between uh, Mediterranean people and uh, managers, which are the pros and cons of uh, this kind of, uh, of alternatives for, for releases. A second uh, site or step would be the geomor geomorphic improvement of, of the reaches by making the channelization of different uh, places, by relocating the defenses, like rip-raps, levees, and berms, and other kind of, of defenses, which are already being done in different places of, of the country with a successful, in general terms, uh, result. Uh, also reconnecting riverbeds and floodplains, which were disconnected by so many decades and centuries of, of occupation of the margins. And finally, to uh, naturalize the platforms, profiles, and sections or of very much uh, degraded areas. So we have uh, experiences on some of these uh, questions by uh, using live projects and other kind of uh, European co-funded projects, which are shown to be successful and, and quite good uh, once they are well designed and well explained to, to people. Some images of those things, which are, as I was saying before, are including the uh, redistribution uh, of the defenses, and even in some uh, in some cases the reintroduction of sediments inside the channel to make the geomorphic balance more accurate and, and better to the uh, targets which are being uh, achieved in this in this case. So these are quite new experiences, and as we were saying before, we were rather fearful of the result, but they are doing uh, quite good uh, and successful uh, approaches. A third and almost the final one is the ecological questions, uh, which involve uh, some of the things which later on Pa will show in, in her presentation, like uh, removing some different uh, weirs and, and small dams. 
Today we have uh, almost removed about 250 wheels all around the country, especially in the center and the north of, of the country. And in all terms, after different cost benefit analysis has shown that uh, these were, these were uh, uh, possible uh, initiatives and they were well based in technical terms. But Pa will later on uh, will show you much more about this, this question, I, I think. Also the protection of different places, of different uh, well-preserved site reaches, which uh, is also important to not just to restore, but to conserve the things which are still in a, in a good status before doing anything which is uh, more expensive and more difficult to, to achieve. And finally, uh, I just wanted to say a word about the importance of the social improvement of rivers. People is eager to go back to rivers. They, they, they feel very well about water, about bathing, about angling, about so many things. So once the uh, administration gives some, uh, some boost to this kind of reconnection of people and, and nature, they rapidly come back to rivers and create new initiatives. It's like a kind of loop with no end. And I think it's quite important to, to have some money uh, prepared for these uh, social initiatives and to, and to create the condition for people to reconnect uh, spiritually and mentally to, to rivers. Now to the point, this was just a very brief and, and maybe fast uh, introduction, but uh, I think it's a good context uh, to understand why we are working the way we are doing things in the case of uh, this uh, river in Madrid, the Manzanares River, which is a river which is in the right center of the, of the country, in the Tagus uh, Basin. This is the Tagus in, in orange uh, uh, perimeter with the Madrid basins in, in also in orange. This is the, the place, uh, here is Madrid located, right in the center of the, of the slide. And this is the Manzana River, which is crossing the, the city from north to south. So it's quite much uh, uh, close to the image of the city and to the uh, uh, history of the, of the dwellers of the, of the city. The main idea of the project was to create a, a big corridor uh, throughout all the region from north to south reconnecting all the different protected areas which are uh, gathered all along the, the region. So here is Madrid, the downtown area. In the north, we have some national and regional parks. And in the south of Madrid, we have another regional park. So the idea was to restore most of the reach of the river. And by this, by creating one uh, long corridor, which could bring together the different protected areas and the different biomass from the mountains to the wetlands of the south of the, of the region. And also to create at the same time one transversal corridor from east to south, from east to west, which also would bring together the different tributaries and other rivers of the, of the region. So it was an important key because it could bring together most of the ecological and environmental uh, processes and, and fluxes which are vital to the, to the place. The, uh, the idea I'm going to comment is based on two different uh, sub reaches. One which is really in the downtown area of the, of the city, which is, uh, as we will see later, uh, just in the, in, the, in the mere environment of, uh, of the downtown area. And the second one is in the north of this, of this place, and it's like the, the ridge which is uh, connecting the city to the main green areas of the north of the, of the region. One good thing is that uh, both ridges are, uh, can be connected by, with people by the Madrid cycling belt, which is the green belt which uh, makes people, uh, uh, can bring people into the river by uh, pedestrian paths or by cycling paths. So there is also a good uh, social connection to both uh, reaches once they are completely restored. First, the downtown reach. This is the, the image of Madrid by the early century. It was a sandy, a sandy river, a full uh, with a riverbed of, of sands and almost a braided platform. So it was a, quite a, an, an appalling and awesome image with so many people uh, using the, the river for its, uh, for its uses, for instance, for bathing. It was the, the place for bathing most of the citizens. So every weekend they came to the, to the river to, to bathe. It was also a place to, to collect sand and other materials for constructions, and also a place for even for, um, for washing the clothing. And uh, as you can see here, all the, you know, all the clothes and all the you know, things from, from, the, from the houses, which were being washed there and left to, to be dried by, by the sun. 
Just in a few years, due to the different uh, extreme uh, flows we had there, uh, very sharp summer flows and very intense uh, winter flows, there was a, a project of channelization of the river, which involved uh, uh, changing completely all the environment and creating one, uh, one section of, of concrete. So uh, the, the place changed dramatically, and it was uh, nothing to see with the former image of the of the river, so people uh, began uh, forgetting about the river and about the former uses they used to, to develop there. And in the 70s, even the place was used for uh, constructing a big motorway around the, around the city and even for installing the stadium of the Atlético de Madrid. As you can see here, it was the place where the Atlético de Madrid stadium was uh, built, occupying all the former natural margins which uh, that river uh, had. So it was created a quite uh, artificial place with a lot of gates and weirs which were regulating the, the river. So it was like a, like a dead river with no, no life, nothing, just water going through, but without any other uh, interest in ecological or social terms. By the early uh, century of, uh, of this century, there was a big work of the city hall to change the, the landscape by removing the motorways from the margins of the river and by uh, repute, re resetting putting the motorway uh, underneath the river. So nowadays, it's uh, uh, channelized under the, these motorways under the river. So there was a big mess of works for some years, but finally a big architectural park was created on both margins. This was uh, an improvement of the area, but it didn't change much the uh, uh, dynamics of the river. So the river continued to be uh, just a channel of, of water, but the margins were changed to something which was more positive to the, to the place. But no other attraction for people, just green areas, but without connection of ecology uh, and, and people. The plate changed. A lot. This is well known. This is the Madrid Rio project, which has been attracting much visitors from different countries, and it was much prized because of the architectural design it had uh, below, but it had no other uh, magic about ecology or other things. So it was a, quite a big change in a big jump in the image of the city, but with no other interest. But things were advancing. Uh, this is the park from the from the year, so it was a, quite a, a new place. From the you know from the former environment, so we had something quite different now. It's it's, it's true. So it's much visited and it's creating a good condition for neighborhoods and for people. But people was demanding much more. The Madrid people wanted to to have a river inside, not a canal, not just water with some ducks and and some ugly fishes. But they wanted to have one river as they had in the in the past. So they demanded insistently a living river. They require the city hall to do something about the river. And after a political change in about uh, 2006, 7, this came to reality uh, with a new team in the city hall, which uh, believed in the idea and created condition for uh, making things a bit different. Anyway, things were not, hard, were not uh, easy because uh, we have a very limited space for the river and we have one motorway below the river. So it's quite difficult to make something new in a place which is completely degraded and difficult to, to change. But people began to interest about uh, the change. And journalists uh, were very attracted by these ideas. So something began to, to change. And uh, just a few years ago, there was a project in 2016 which uh, uh, involved opening all weir gates of the, of the river just to avoid water to be uh, accumulated or stored in those uh, small ponds and to create a continuous flux of water, sediment, nutrients, and life. It was not much, but it was a lot because after almost one century, we gave the opportunity to the river to uh, change the landscape and to create conditions for life. In the last two years, the three different subreaches of the place has been renaturalized. And uh, next year, it will come to an end with the, with the final execution of the final reach, which is planned to be restored. What happened after opening the gates and after letting flow go through the channel? The answer of the river was very, very fast. It was incredible to see how the, the, the river changed so much in, in almost one year. So the sun came back to the river. The depth of the water was uh, quite scarce, which was good because it created conditions for the Mediterranean fishes to come back and to avoid the, the former alien species which were colonizing the place, like black basses, uh, carps, and, and other uh, 
of a physicist. So now we have a mosaic of different um, patches of vegetation, halophytes, macrophytes. It's not much, as you see. It's not, a, of course, this is not idealistic or, or the best. But now we have a river which is a mosaic of complex areas, like it was a bit in the past. If you remember the, the first photo of the, of the presentation, we have something which is uh, more close to that than to the previously dead river we had in the, in the city. There were limitations, of course. Limitations were like uh, not interfering with the complex dynamics of the city, with so many different things uh, going around. We could not uh, reduce the flood risk uh, level, which is uh, we are obliged to, to provide to the to the place, which is the uh, 500 uh, return period uh, uh, threshold. We need to be constantly monitoring the evolution of the riverbed because uh, vegetation is colonizing so rapidly the place that we have to be sure that we are not. Uh, creating bad condition for, for the hydraulic uh, flux of the, of the channel. We also have to be sure of the uh, safety of all the facilities, uh, streets, motorways, and we also had some budget and temporal constraints. This was done in almost two years with a low budget. It's uh, about uh, 1.5 million euros, which is mm, almost nothing for, for such a big city. And uh, it was good because it was not a macro project with so many, no, it was a small project with a lot of uh, of results. And also, uh, in the last two years, the, the number of uh, species which have been uh, back to the place has been astonishing. We have hundreds of different bird species, and also three, four, five uh, native species of fishes which are being uh, are using right now the, the place, and it's creating like an atmosphere for people of uh, nature in the city, which is something quite different from, from the past. So, in general terms, it was a positive uh, question, and this is the uh, like the, um, the image of the place you see again with the constraints of, of space we had in the past, but with uh, quite a dynamic uh, place in terms of the of the banks, of the margins, and of these uh, islands inside the, the bed of the of the river. There are two questions which have to be solved. One of them is that uh, by avoiding the, the the ponds which were artificial in the place we have deleted the condition for rowers to uh, go and use in the, the channel. So the, the previous clubs of rowers are quite uh, angry because they have been like deleted from the, from the place. We don't have now one pond, we have one river and they, they wanted one pond to make the, uh, the sport. So now there's a kind of conflict which has to be uh, overcome and solved in the following years. And the second one is that a uh, river is so uh, dynamic, it's so fastly growing vegetation that we need to uh, cut some of this vegetation to avoid that it uh, collapses some of the bridges we have in the city. So it needs some monitoring, some maintenance by avoiding that this vegetation uh, collapses some of the ice of the, of the bridges. So apart from this, the rest of the project is considered one big uh, success in the, in the city. The second and shorter uh, side of presentation is about the upstream reach. This is not in downtown area, but it's completely connected to the downtown area. This is a more natural place. This is a, a kind of big area which was protected because, because it's, uh, it was owned by the monarchy in the past. It's a natural heritage uh, place. So it's quite uh, well preserved, the basin, but still uh, the upper areas of the basins uh, have developed much in terms of uh, of uh, construction of urban areas. So mm, some of the tributaries of the river now are bringing much uh, sediment to the, to the main channel of Manzanar River and are creating some artificial ponds which are mostly based on the uh, now known as syndrome of the urbanized uh, basin, which means that in very urbanized, uh, urbanized basins, the erosion and the incision of the channels is creating problems, and this is one example. It's not in the place, but outside this, uh, this image, we have some troubles about the, uh, the generation of sediments which are being collapsing the, the river and creating this kind of uh, artificial ponds you can see here, which have created a bad condition for also for the ecological dynamics of the, of the river. A very brief a summary of the main uh, troubles we are finding here. It's a quite regulated uh, river, uh, but regulation has created conditions uh, for homogenization of, of flows, uh, um, increasing summer flows and reducing much the uh, winter flows. So this has uh, created conditions for uh, avoiding the formerly braided uh, 
a platform of the river, and it has also narrowed the channel and incised the, the channel. This can be seen even in the bridges. You can see here the former bridges are now completely incised uh, over two, three meters of incision, which has, uh, has been changing also dramatically the uh, uh, landscape of the, of the river. Those uh, lack of uh, flow extremes in terms of summer flows and winter flows are giving conditions for sediment to stabilize in the place and to, uh, for plants to encroach the, the channel, but also the continuous increase of water due to the artificial ponding is also making vegetation uh, have a bad status and also making this vegetation die. So it's like a kind of, um, of, of bad loop. Vegetation encroaches, but then dies because of the level of water, which is increasing much and much by this uh, arrival of sediments to the main channel from the tributaries. This is why the landscape changed in this, like in this sequence from the early century, a braided, a wide and shallow channel to a very, uh, you see, narrow, incised and vegetated channel, which is typical for many places in Europe because we are facing, most of us, similar problems. Urbanization is making rivers to evolve in this, in this sense. Just to be very brief in the explanation, we made a, a lot of uh, different analyses and we understand that this, the main inconveniences of this process were the narrowing of the channel, the loss of secondary channels in the, in the main stem, the stabilization of bars and islands, incision, as I was saying before. We had a, a big loss of space for the river, a loss of connectivity in terms of longitudinal and transversal connectivity. We had a reduced quality of aquatic and riparian habitats, and we had a big uh, decay of scenic and aesthetic values. So this was like the uh, like the, the status we found uh, like two, three years ago. And for these questions, we designed a whole range of different uh, solutions, which included an improvement of the present e-flow regime to release control flats. And now I'm connecting this with the former slides I was presenting before. Also to expand uh, river space, to naturalize the morphology of the river, to diversify hydraulic in the riverbed, to eliminate all kinds of alien species, diet species, and, and exotic, to eliminate any kind of debris uh, work uh, which was not uh, optimal for the, for the place, to create fish ramps in case of those weirs which could not be deleted, and finally to improve public uses and to make people reconnect with river even in that uh, not so far part of the, of the system. Uh, very briefly, I just so four slides of the, the four uh, tools which are, are signaling red in the, in the slide. For instance, about the uh, release of control flats, we made different studies uh, and modelizations, uh, hydraulic and ecological, about the kind of con uh, flats which could be more beneficial for the river in terms of how these flats could be regenerating the habitats, transporting the sediments uh, by uh, different processes, or to creating uh, conditions for uh, mobilizing near different areas inside the bed to create a new river with, uh, with instability, which is good for, uh, for it because it's lacking uh, any kind of instability. And, and thus, it has so fixed conditions that it's not attracting any more ecological interest. So this control flat is expected to be applied in the future, uh, in the near future, which will be not today, but uh, maybe next year. With, it's, a, it's a kind of ordinary flat with about uh, 40 cubic meters per second in three days. So it's something which could be uh, uh, filling the, the bank. It's a, a bank full and, uh, flow and uh, to be released between the months of March or February. Also, we made different works about uh, diversifying the, the bed of the river by introducing these typical diagrams of uh, big stones, uh, stems of the alien species which were cut from the margins. So we fixed them in the, in the bank with different uh, techniques. And this also created conditions for uh, uh, making more complex the habitat and to attract uh, fishes which were not uh, spawning here or make any kind of biological cycle. So this is something quite cheap. And in this kind of... Uh, homogenized places, it could be a, a, a nice solution. About the, the wheels, which cannot be deleted because they have a contracts which are still in, 
uh, in under development, uh, we have designed that kind of uh, fish ramp, which will be constructed uh, by uh, this this year, by October, November this year. It, it plans to to allow fishes to move freely all along the the place and to make conditions also for the downtown area fishes to come here for their biological cycles or any other uh, thing they need to to do. And finally, the, if you want to uh, to see uh, the tools and the solutions we are trying to do on different images and videos, there is one website, which is this one you have in the lower side of the slide, which brings together all the images, videos, and all the ideas I have tried to, to show you here today. And also this is, there is one paper we I published last year, which uh, in, in paper is also transmitting most of these uh, questions in case any of you wants to to deepen into this uh, initiative. And this is all. Thank you so much. And, uh, yeah. Grazie Fernando. Credo che sia stato molto interessante vedere come anche in un contesto che penso possiamo chiamare estremamente urbanizzato si possano fare interventi di riqualificazione fluviale di successo proprio anche perché con una popolazione così densamente vicina al fiume c'è un servizio ecosistemico ben diffuso a un'ampia popolazione. C'è spazio per qualche domanda? Eh, credo che ci siano... Ci siano sicuramente... Eh, Paolo Mancini, che ha il, il microfono? Marco Monaci? Thanks, Fernando, for your relation. Congratulations. Uh, the question is about uh, sediments in Spain. You uh, underlined the aspect of sediment management um, in rivers, perhaps in dams. And I wondered uh, if uh, in Spain, you, how do you approach to the team of sediment management if you have uh, one master plan, if you approach at which scale, if you have several master plans for each uh, basin? Thanks. Thank you. This is a quite important question. Uh, we have so many troubles with sediments in the country. We have about uh, 1,500 big dams constructed, and most of them are losing each year uh, maybe point, uh, 0 0.5 capacity of, of the initial storage capacity due to this question. And in some basins, this could be even more dramatic. Some dams have been losing uh, almost entirely its capacity in 10, 20 years due to the sediment question. This is not a master plan. Uh, it has been much discussed in different uh, uh, places and, and in the government, but it's a case-by-case -case, uh, question. Uh, there were some experiences in the past, uh, for instance, releasing, uh, opening the, um, uh, the bottom gates of the, of the dams to allow sediments to go beyond, to go uh, through the basin, but it were, they were not much successful because it also increased much turbidity and created conditions uh, which is difficult for fishes and for other ecological questions. Sometimes they have tried to be uh, extracted from the, from, the, um, from the dam and then reintroduced uh, augmentation uh, uh, downstream of the, of the dam in some experiences, but they are rather punctual. There's not a master plan for the, for the whole country. Uh, still, it's a question of much interest in the whole world. Uh, we have uh, different countries asking us what to do, for instance, uh, in South America, in Asia, what, what to do with sediments. And in the, in the newly constructed dams, there are solutions, you know, like tunnels, like bypasses, many different things. But uh, for the old dams, uh, the question is quite difficult because all the, the sediments which are in the bottom are, are difficult to uh, dehydrate, to, to extract water from, uh, from it, and then to use it for agriculture or for other... There are many ideas and many uh, analyses, but there's not, uh, there not, unfortunately, a master plan for the whole country. Qualche altra domanda? Thank you, Fernando, for having provided these ecosystem services. Now we have 20, uh, 250 Italians with the, an additional reason for visiting Madrid, I think, because of this project. So uh, my question is very connected with the one by Paolo. Uh, if uh, I have understood well, uh, 
what you are doing to implement in the upstream reach of the river will uh, will increase the sediment load. So the as Madrid is a bottleneck, you know what I mean. This load will pass through the town and possibly with the increase the the riverbed level and possibly uh, increment the um, the flood risk in the downtown. So, have you considering this connection between restoring a river upstream of such a town like Madrid in terms of morphology, and what are the solutions you are taking into account? Yeah, of course, this is a quite complex idea. <clears throat> of course, the city hall uh, doesn't want any kind of uh, increase of, of risks in the in the place, and we have to respect the 500 uh, threshold of, for the uh, for flood uh, recurrence. But uh, we're designing um, something which uh, is based on avoiding so much generation of sediments from the upper areas of the basin, which are urbanized today, and are not uh, really retaining sediments. Uh, and we want them to uh, develop green infrastructures and water retention measures in most of these places by lagoons, by natural lagoons, which are uh, um, 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 taking all the, the water for, for, from the big rainfall and big uh, floods to retain it temporarily there and release it more slowly and more quietly to avoid those big sediments uh, loads to be inside the channel. So it's like retaining, retaining in the upper areas, but then inside the channel to allow sediment to move more freely to uh, allow habitats to regenerate, to create conditions for those bars and islands of vegetation or non-vegetation to move dynamically and to increase the ecological condition. Nowadays, in the present time, the invertebrates and feces indicators are showing that it was almost a dead river. We had the Biological Monitoring Working Party Index of about uh, 15 uh, or something like this, which is uh, almost uh, ridiculous. So we need to retain sediments in the places where they are being generated, but once it uh, goes into the channel to let it move more or less freely. And the city hall is asking, of course, a lot of uh, modelizations to show that this is not uh, increasing risks in the, in the place, but we think that with the loads we are discussing, it will not be a, a big problem. And if there are flows to move it, if, if you, we bring together the sediment load with the control flats, we will make conditions for this sediment to go through the city and to avoid stabilizing inside the uh, downtown area. So we need sediments, but we need water which moves the sediment, not only sediment which can collapse in critical uh, sections of the, of the place. So if we bring those two together, things will be uh, quite, uh, quite better. Molte grazie Fernando, credo che altre indicazioni su come gestire situazioni simili verranno dalla prossima presentazione, quella di...